Welcome to Peg Warmers. I'm Kevin, and I'm here to talk about toys. Today, I've got another Peg Warmer Spotlight. I have some of the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins figures here. These are from the Kid Line. We've talked about many a times on the show that the G.I. Joe classified Snake Eyes figures have been peg warming. The kid line finally hit clearance at my Walmart. Um, I bought a Snake Eyes and a Storm Shadow when the movie first came out from this line. I wanted to get the Night Creeper really bad because he looks like the vintage figure, just sort of in a different scale, and I thought that would be fun. Never saw one. Never saw one at all. He was the least peg warmer of this line. Uh, but my Walmart had Scarlet, the Baroness, and the Red Ninja, who is an army builder, kind of uh, clogging the pegs. They discounted them from ten forty seven to seven dollars, and I decided to grab some. Now, Scarlet and Baroness are core GI Joe characters, some of the most important characters in GI Joe lore, but they're female characters, and we hear time and time again female characters don't sell well. And this, you know, might be more proof to that. You know, the kid goes to the store to pick out a toy, and he picks Snake Eyes the first time. The second time, he picks Storm Shadow. Clearly, he picked um, the Ninja, the Night Creeper, or all the collectors grabbed him. It is interesting, though, that the Red Ninja, who is an army builder, didn't sell out. But I don't really like the design of him that much. He's based similarly on the, the Classifieds design, and I wasn't really wild about that one. It's not co comic book accurate, which I think hurts the fans. Um, but maybe they were going for something more kidified. Uh, the whole classified line was based on that Operation Blackout game, and the early classified figures were. So that's kind of where this design came from. It's interesting to see that he didn't sell out. So we're going to start with the Baroness here. She uh, definitely was on the shelves for a long time. Her bubble was, like, coming loose and everything. Um I think a lot of these guys, I tend to find this with with my peg warmer purchases that uh, the cards are pretty beat up. So I'll pull her out of the package here. She comes with a couple of accessories. This is actually the first time I'm trying out any of these figures from the kid line. The Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow I bought, I didn't open. Oh, she's got the power punch like a He-Man figure. That's actually kind of cool. Articulation in the shoulders that ratchets and spins around, elbow joints, nothing at the wrists. That waist swivel is not for posing at all. She does have good hip joints. She does have a knee joint there that can rotate, and she has no ankle articulation. Oh, I did actually play with one of these. My stepson has one of the snake eyes on the ninja bike, and I have seen that one out of the package and played with it. I don't remember that he had the slash feature. He might or might not, the, the power punch. In her package, she's got three accessories here. She's got a crazy-looking weapon here. Doesn't even really look like a laser because it's got, like, a snake head on the front. I don't know if that's a missile or a, like, capture claw type of thing. This is uh, this is the kitty G.I. Joe line trying to avoid having guns in it but still having guns in it. Kind of like how Classifieds came with the Nerf gun-looking weapons. Uh, it's hard to get this in her hand. It's one of these closed-stock weapons they look cool in theory they're really hard to put in action figures hands i really wish toy companies would stop doing that uh so i'm just going to give her her knives then i guess which have snake heads on them they're also going to have the same type of problem it's hard to slide them into her hands when they don't have straight handles they do look pretty cool they could have used uh, a splash of paint for the, the the blades to be silver on them uh, popped out of her hand Overall, though, I think this Baroness is pretty decent looking. She's got, um, like, a navy blue jumpsuit with some black pads on it, some straps. Her chest sort of looks like it has a Cobra logo to the way the red goes around it, but it's obscured by the harness. I'm not sure if it is actually a Cobra logo or just some red piping. She's got her glasses permanently molded on, which is probably the right way to go for this scale. Removable glasses often get lost and just look a little funny. She has what appear to be holsters sculpted on the side of her legs, but there is no way to attach the snake daggers to them and no way for her to hold the weapon without it being uh, attached. 
overall, not a bad figure. I kind of like this line ish not necessarily for collectors but if you're trying to get kids into it it's better than like the new sculpt era the venom vs valor spy troops kind of thing it, it it has a little bit of that kidified feel but looks a little bit nicer next we're going to jump over to the red ninja the army builder here i want to see the difference between the male and female body types all right so we've got the red ninja out of the package he's definitely a larger figure a little bit taller, definitely wider at the shoulders, wider at the hips, uh, a bigger figure. And yet he somehow comes with more accessories than the Baroness. Interesting uh, value added kind of thing there. Uh, maybe the girls should have had a few more accessories or something fun to go with them to, to attract buyers. I'm not sure. So the Red Ninja has a harness on his chest here. He has this giant staff. I don't really know what you would call this. This is like a crazy non-weapon weapon it has a post in the middle here that allows you to plug on his other accessories or attach them to make some sort of goofy super weapon so let's try that first here i can plug a sigh on the top of his staff these weapons are very warped i can plug a sigh on the bottom of the staff and give him this giant crazy bladed weapon then he has these two sickle weapons that can get clipped onto the frame. And now he has an absolutely insane combat weapon that can be broken down into other things. I, is this what kids are looking for in, in accessories? Modular monstrosities? Maybe. I'm not sure. The size, again, suffer from the fact they're really hard to put in his hand because they have the bulbous end that is used for the clip. Now you got to try and force this in his hand instead of sliding it in. That was kind of the trick with the original G.I. Joes. Almost every accessory had just a straight handle that would slide into almost every hand very easily, which works well for kids. I know for a fact this would have been very frustrating for my stepsons trying to put these weapons in and out of their hands. The sickle weapons, they do have the type of handles I'm talking about. Those are pretty easy to put in his hands. As far as articulation goes, his head moves on a ball joint, so you got a decent range of motion there. He's got the shoulders just like the Baroness, elbows like the Baroness. No wrist swivels, but the, the elbow swivels. Did she have wrist swivels? No, she had elbow swivels. I think I might have misspoken when I was taking a look at the Baroness. Uh, he does have the power punch action feature, which is kind of fun for these figures. Um, I didn't do this with the Baroness because I didn't have another figure out, but th this is fun bash play for kids. He has hip joints that move out to the side, forward and backwards. He does have a loincloth, but it really doesn't get in the way. So he can sit, which is great. They didn't do a lot of vehicles in this line, but there were some motorcycles. So you do want to be able to have the figures interact with them. For some reason, his knee joint is, like, locked up. Wow. Can't get that to move to save my life. Uh, <laughs> the web harness piece here is not meant to be removed. I think if you pop his head off, you might be able to get it off. Uh, but he has no painted detail on his chest. He'd look really plain without that. Overall, not a terrible figure. I think a kid would have fun with him. Um, but, you know, the content just didn't really, didn't promote the Red Ninjas at all. So uh, I'm not sure why a kid in the store is definitely going to go after this guy. But then again, the Night Creepers. The Night Creepers sold. I think that was the the design, though. I know there were a lot of fans like myself that wanted him because he was so retro inspired on to the last figure we've got scarlet the first lady of gi joe in a very modern looking outfit very similar to her classified outfit but just classic enough it does kind of remind me a little bit of batgirl uh, maybe it's just because she's a redhead but the purple jumpsuit and everything it just kind of looks like a barbara gordon without the the cowl on all right, I've got Scarlet out of the package. She is very similar to the Baroness uh, in her articulation and posability. She has some decent paintwork on her. It's pretty big splotches, so like a big area on her chest, a big area on her shoulders. That probably helps keep costs down because it's big paint swipes. There is a little bit of detail on her wrist gauntlets that are some small spaces that they did need to do some intricate paint masking. Um, but it, it's one of those things I look at sometimes, the difference between a collector and a toy line for kids is, like, how detailed is that paintwork? 
She has the power punch action built into her. She's got hips move out to the side, forward and backwards. She's got the knee joints that can swivel there. Overall, a pretty nice figure. I think that these designs would have worked really nicely for a modern kids G.I. Joe cartoon. Her accessories, she has the modular thing going on. Um, I didn't notice it at all with the Baroness that any there was no way for the knives to clip onto her weapon that I could tell about. Red Ninja, obviously, his staff just kept getting more elaborate. Scarlet has this goofy-looking gun, and that gun can clip on the bow she comes with, which is great because that gives you her traditional crossbow. It's a little big, um, but I do kind of like that you've got the ninja bow or the crossbow. Probably lets them reuse this bow a couple times. And she also comes with two knives. Those are a little bit stranger because those also can clip on to this weapon. And now she has, like, a double bayonet. Uh, it, it makes the weapon get a little bit clunky. This looks a little bit like the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Power Blaster. Um, you got the power uh, axe and the power bow and the power lance and the power daggers and the power sword all coming together to, to destroy the bad guy. That's what this very much feels like. But overall, I think it is a kind of cool weapon. It, it, it looks like a weapon, not some goofy, crazy thing. It does have some paint apps. When you take the knives off, it at least seems to be her signature weapon, which is good for kids. Um, and like I said, with that bow, it's probably the same bow that came with Storm Shadow or one of the other characters, so that gets them some reusage. These knives may have came with other characters. So she could hold a knife in her hand and have the bow in her hand, so she's really kind of armed up. She does have the extra knife, which you can clip on. You could clip them on backwards if you wanted to, if you don't want it to look like a, a silly bayonet. You could have it kind of point backwards uh, with the blade up so it's not like going into her hand. That gives her another option for storing that. I think personally, out of all of these, the Scarlet is my favorite, although I, I'm a little biased maybe because I've always thought Scarlet was a really great character. Um, the comic books did a great job with her. The cartoon did a great job with her in the original thing, and really she's probably one of the best characters in the Snake Eyes movie, which isn't saying much, but uh, I, I like this figure a lot. So this has been a Peg Warmer Spotlight video. Please make sure to hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. Consider subscribing if you're new here, and if you have the ability to support the channel further, consider joining our Patreon. Those core supporters really do help keep this channel going. Thanks for hanging on the peg with me.